Hello. Can you hear me? Hey, buddy. Hey there. How's it going? Doing pretty well. It's a long day, busy day, but uh, getting stuff done. How about you? Same. Same. Pretty hectic right now. In a good way, I hope. In a great way, in the best way, you know, but just a lot of lot of moving parts keeping all the balls in the air. Absolutely. Um, well, we got, we're going to cover a couple of things today. Uh, first, let's t we're going to talk about the uh, as if uh, the '90s fest, which uh, Time Junior wants something about that by Monday. And also, I want to talk about your music and your new record and stuff as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, let's start out with the festival. Uh, tell me about. Um, how you how you got the idea for it and who helped put you together and just you know break it down for the people okay um so i am a band leader which you know mm -hmm. um and my fiance and i actually lost our house back in hurricane matthew in 2016 um and we coordinated an artist fundraiser um, because a lot of musicians back then had lost or were relocated from their homes. Um, you know, they, the downtown of St. Augustine was closed for about eight weeks. Um, so we kind of became passionate and we realized within the community where some needs weren't being met and with what kind of workers, uh, especially, um, where we could be of service, you know, yeah. basically as members of our community. So I'm really passionate about all of St. Augustine and my community in North Florida. You know, there's a lot of creatives here. There's a lot of talent here, but not necessarily all of the infrastructure for people to turn their talent into enterprise. Um, so I was sort of looking originally to develop a nonprofit where we could work with tourism, hospitality workers, entertainers, service industry, people in general who, you know, maybe they have a medical issue and, and it's a crisis and they don't know, you know, really how they're going to handle that. Or maybe they want to apply for a PPP and they don't really know how to handle that. Or maybe, you know, they need guidance. So that's sort of where the idea of our nonprofit was born. Um, so we, we developed a nonprofit and then 90s fest you know we wanted to have a music festival as our as our fundraiser um, oh what's the name of the nonprofit? ace alliance ace Court. alliance uh, what's the uh, web web address for that it's so basically right now it's it the 90s fest has taken over our web address okay um, so there's an ace alliance column on the 90s fest um it's as if 90s fest and it's got it's got the nonprofit has its own section Gotcha. Um, but so Ancient City Entertainment is my company and Ace Alliance is the nonprofit component of that company. So because we're interfacing with creatives, because, you know, the thing is, as a musician, I work in bars and restaurants and I know restaurant managers and I know all of these people who work in a culture of hospitality. Yeah. And sometimes when the situation isn't hospitable or life isn't hospitable to those people, you know, it would be great to have a local grant, basically the call it the biggest tip pool in North Florida, yes. you know, because that's what, that's what it is. You know, that's what we survive on the generosity of others most frequently anyway. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how that was born. And then we wanted to do a fundraiser. We're, we have several events throughout the year. Like I did a thing with the St. Augustine Cultural Council, helping um, artists fill out the federal aid forms during coronavirus. Um, and really just giving them the tools to say, hey, you know, there's a community of people that are looking out for each other. It, you yeah. know, if you're if you worked in housekeeping in a hotel and you were out of work for eight weeks you know mm -hmm. who who does housekeeping at a hotel reach out to you know right. they don't so yeah it's not just it's not just musicians just entertainers it's tourism professionals which all kind of go hand in hand absolutely in uh have you gotten a lot of uh support and cooperation from like the local government city government things like that overwhelming good i mean honestly i would say that is my biggest thing I'm pleased with and proud of is the amount of I was ready for a little pushback you know sure. I, was, I was ready for it and and literally they have not thrown one 
one hoop in my way to jump through. They have been over backwards to say, we're really excited and want to be a part of this in every way we can. Okay. Um, tell me about, tell me about the date of the festival and where it's going to be at um, and uh, who some of the performers are going to be. May 15th on Francis Field, downtown St. Augustine. It's a one day event from noon to 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of local St. Augustine performers, myself included, actually. Um, Cholula, uh, Bad Dog Mama, um, Space Heaters, um, some of the downtown St. Augustine favorites. And then we also have um, Sister Hazel, Ken and Drew from Sister Hazel, the acoustic mm -hmm. um, performers, the singers. They're going to be there doing a a performance about midday and then coolio comes on stage at the end to close out the show oh that's going to be fantastic uh are you going to have like will there be like food trucks and little things like that oh yeah there? all of that so we have over 45 vendors we have uh i think 12 food trucks um we have cut the capacity on the field in half mm -hmm. to give people plenty of room to space out we do actually have a 28 foot water slide it's the first time a water slide will ever be on francis field so oh. it's we're really looking to do a service industry summer kickoff every year and have that be our big fundraiser, you know? That's a, that's a great thing. That's a great way to kick off the summer. It's a good way to bring, like, uh, all the people in the community working in that industry together, get everybody on the same page while you're planning um, your activities for the summer. Absolutely. Well. Um, how much are tickets? Tickets are $15. Um, we have a VIP option, which includes like upgraded porta potties, air conditioned porta potties and an upgraded bar. Um, but there's all of the, um, we have actually specialty nineties craft cocktails because we really got, we involved the service yeah. industry. We got the, yeah. best, the best of the best bartenders, the best of the best restaurants and people really got involved and it was a all hands on deck kind of a situation they made um, three craft cocktails specific for 90s Fest. They did like oh. um, a, an adult Capri Sun, which Malibu sponsored. <laughs> uh, we also did a white Russian called the Dude Abides. That oh. comes in a little carton. And it's um, sponsored by Vodka Vodka. And then we have, uh, oh, we have Snoopy D's Gin and Juice sponsored they by Ford's Gin. So yeah, we got, we got a wow. great port network you you put a lot of thought in into the, like all the little details with that that's a good job there that's what i'm really passionate about and you know you're you're very busy you know these days like you're doing all this and of course you're doing everything with your band as as well uh tell me tell me about like how long the band has been around and then so the like, band has been, we've been a band for eight years actually um, but we have changed, you know, over the course of eight years, we've definitely evolved into what our lineup is now. Um, we started out as a trio eight years ago. It was sax, guitar, and vocal. Um, very quickly, we really wanted to pump up the volume and get it, you know. Literally. <laughs> Literally. And um, so we really wanted, I, I, you know, there's a lack of female front women in North That's Florida. True. So I really take pride in that position and being a woman on stage and, you know, having a band that's very diverse, very gifted, um, award-winning. I mean, we have, yeah. we, yeah, we, everybody in our band is a killer, you know, so we're definitely an all-star group of people and we all have our own projects, but yeah. they're super supportive you know, Ramona and the Riot, we, this year, we really, we hunkered in on our original, new original music releases and, you know, um, really pedal to the floor as far as branding and all of the business stuff that goes along with music and being creative, you know, it's hard yeah. to, it's hard to do both. Yeah. Really both. You have a very commanding presence. You know, I've seen you guys several times at Prohibition Kitchen, which is where a lot of the uh, readers may, uh, best remember you guys from uh, but you play at all types of other venues around town um tell me about some of the places besides the uh, festival that your your band will be playing at in the next uh few weeks so we actually this um tomorrow we do st augustine food and wine festival we're headlining that and then we have um the week of we we're we're quickly becoming a more regional band which is kind of hard for me to grapple with um 
we will be, we do perform at Prohibition Kitchen monthly, mm -hmm. but in the next, within the next two months, you know, we're in Savannah and we're going to, you know, I think we have Atlanta coming up and Charlotte coming up and, um, you know, it's, it's growing pretty quick. We will be at Jacksonville Porch Fest as right. well, November 6th. And we will also be, um, headlining uh, College Park Jazz Fest in Orlando in November as well. You've got like, a, aren't you doing like a New York gig or something? Uh, I'm going, so I'm singing at the Observatory of, oh. of Freedom Tower. So where actually the Twin Towers were, the building yeah. there now. So I'm performing in the Observatory of Freedom Tower October 23rd. And then for New Year's Eve, we're going to Breckenridge, Colorado, and we are going to be doing some other dates out in Denver and Vail um, out there. And it, I mean, we, so basically we, really, we released this EP and we started getting press like every day. We started waking up and being like, oh, there's more, there's like another article about it. Like, yeah. you know, and, and some of that you solicit as an artist and some of that you just are taken totally off the surprise by so sure. that was really i was waiting for a bad review you know i was mm -hmm. holding my breath like when's the bad one gonna show up and it kind of never did and and we started to chart on the college radio charts and um we got a radio report from the north american college and community nacc uh like a radio report and they showed you know we were playing in like over 300 cities in north america and wow. very quickly we we started to move up the charts so we were looking every week like what's going like where are we you know and we were like it was like black pumas us andra day and it was just like these names that i was like i cannot believe that this little band you know from north florida is kind of getting this level of recognition and people just people were vibing to it and it's a different sound actually than we we play live a very high energy rock and roll motown yeah. almost r and b um but i would say our our um album is a little more intentional a little more cinematic a little more um it's not as insane as our live show just mm. yet but we're about to release a follow-up track that's pretty insane so it's i mean just like the festival hard work pays off you know you put in the effort to you know make a quality product and you know you do do your p's and q's about business and then you put it out there and then it kind of uh, builds its own momentum you know it does build its own momentum and, it, and that's not to say there aren't days as an artist where you feel like an imposter or you feel like sure and you know there are still days people ask me that all the time and i and i really have to be honest about if you're an artist be prepared to get rejected 73 out of 100 times yeah and and 10 after that are maybes you know yeah. So oh yeah you, you just gotta keep mm -hmm. pushing <laughs> keep going you know and you guys you project so much confidence as a front woman from the stage and i'm sure that now like after all the work you put in you know, when you get that kind of respect from the people and from the college radio and stuff like that, you can really take it to heart and know that like you, you've earned that hype. You've, you've earned, earned it. Yeah. It feels actually, I always tell people, people say that about my confidence and, and I th take that as such a big compliment because confidence for me is something that's so internal. It has nothing to do with music. It has to do with just being myself and mm -hmm. having been a weirdo for a long time yes. now that's cool like now it's cool and i'm like oh i was like a weirdo in school you know yeah but, uh, but i think like on the other side of that you know knowing you earn it it's it is a it's a self-fulfilling prophecy you know being confident in the while you're doing i always say it's like being a noah you know like you're building mm. the ark and everybody's looking at you like you're insane yeah. But you just keep building it, you know, and then one sure. day when the flood comes, you got a big boat to jump on. <laughs> it's like, well, there That's you right. go. Uh, what's the name of the uh, EP and where can people uh, get copies of it? So the EP is called The Law of Contagion, um, which is a, I have to touch on this because a lot yes. of people are like, oh, it's coronavirus related. The Law of Contagion is a concept of the metaphysical that if you touch something, if you come into contact with something, it will either give you a 
positive or a negative charge until you formally consecrate breaking away from that thing. So I think music is very like that. Like, yeah. I feel like music creates a viral charge in the audience. And that's kind of where that came from. Um, but that, but it's available Spotify, iTunes, I, Apple Music, um, Deezer, Weezer, Schmeezer, Shazam, whatever, yes. you know, all mm -hmm. the places it's out there. And um, Pony Express. Yeah. Yeah. Pony Express. But <laughs> We, we got it for you, you know, so it's definitely, um, and we are going to be releasing a, a follow-up track mid-summer. Excellent. Uh, do you mind if I take a quick screenshot for, uh, for the uh, Instagram? No. So, all right. Because just to let people know, uh, let's see, you get it? Uh, one. There you go. I, I look dark as hell. And I'll probably... <laughs> Probably put the video up on YouTube to the uh, the Times Union. I'm gonna write this up for the Times Union, and it should be out. Uh, it'll be out before uh, next weekend. So I'm turning in cool. Monday. So hopefully, and the event's on Saturday, right? The event is on next Saturday. Yep. Next, all right. So we're gonna shoot to hopefully Friday, maybe Saturday okay. morning, but hopefully Friday. Now, uh, real quick, uh, give me a breakdown of the members of the band and uh, the instruments they play, so I can be accurate with that. Okay, so on drums, we have um, Andre Pocket. Great name. On, on, yeah. On, um, yeah, that's his alias, and that's all we're, that's all we're allowed to release oh. to you. So. Mm -hmm. Kayfabe. <laughs> um, on trumpet, actually, you, you know uh, Rob Bidwell, who plays, he also plays with Be Easy. Yeah. Um, but he's play, he played with me first, so I just want to say that um, mm -hmm. for the record. But he, uh, Rob Bidwell, Chris Kearns is my sax player. And he's an original member of the band. Of is the that, band. how do you spell Kearns? K-E-A-R-N-E-S. -E okay. Um, Alberto Sabalero, who's my fiance, is the guitar player. Mm -hmm. um, and my partner in all things. All, I should preface all of this interview by saying, none of this is possible without that dude. Because Of course. He keeps me in, from going insane full Kanye West. So let me guess, C C E B A L L E R O. C E B O L L E R O. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um. So then me, and then who else? Um. Jose Via Pondo is plays bass. V A V I L L A L P A N D O. D O. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Liston Gregory is our keys player and music director. Cool. And I'll be sure to run all the names back by you before I for send it sure, in just to sure. double, double check. And where can people find out more about the band uh, and uh, your upcoming stuff and like your website and all that? Um, it's Ramona.com. Ramona.com. That's a great. Uh, it, it, it's, so it's it's Ramona.com. It's Ramona.com. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're all, all right. We're almost ready to wrap up here, but. Yeah, we gotta gotta talk about uh, Miss uh, oh Miss Judy Bloom was it Judy Bloom? Oh played? um no, oh, it's, um, it's Beverly Cleary. Beverly Cleary. I always get both. them confused. You know, tell They're me both a, good. Please tell me a bit about Beverly Cleary and her influence on you and her and just you know how you felt losing her. It's too bad she would have liked you. She would have been very happy to know. Uh, Oh, she How had a that came about. Yeah, she had a profound impact on my on me for sure. Um, I am a reader, lifelong reader. I love to read. And when I was a child, I was a book monster. I was like the literal, the real Matilda. Mm. Um, and I loved that character, Ramona, from the first time I read about her. I was like, that's me. That's I feel that. I'm that's me. And I think, you know, for Beverly Cleary, and she said this a few times in interviews, like it was very important for her to illustrate a girl in a precocious position who it wasn't necessarily being bossy or annoying or a yeah. was just being herself and had great leadership potential. Yeah. And it was like, she kind of had to stomp her feet to, to get in the room, you mm -hmm. know, but like, but she was there and really, really competent and really, you know, um, so I love that. And actually, funny story, a group of teachers once contacted us through our website from um, Portland, which is where Beverly Cleary's from. 
and they had found our band because our band was originally called the Ramona Quimby band. Yes. Yes. So at that time, a group of teachers contacted us and they did an interview with me and they were like, you're, they were like, we always knew like Ramona Quimby would grow up and have her own band. They were like, we oh. so, and I was oh, like, that's the best gosh. compliment of all time. Like, that's, exactly. And that's when I first, I think that's when I first met you guys, uh, when you were the Ramona Quimby band. I, I don't know if it was maybe, I don't know if it was Art Walk, maybe One Spark or something, but when you guys were playing at, at Hemming Park, which is now James Weldon Johnson. Park. Long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, that was, the, that was in the beginning. And you had that, you had that, you had that stage presence even then, because you're, you know, you're playing there at the little stage in the park, but, you know, you could be out over by the library and you could hear the voice and like, people, you could see people like, oh, who's this? I got to go check this out. <laughs> you know? Oh, well, it's, I, you know, I love Jacksonville. I live in St. Augustine and I, and I love St. Augustine. I mm -hmm. love it here. Um, but Jacksonville is such a, to be as big as it is, it's such a warm, familiar embrace kind yeah. of a place. And I really think it's so cool when I tell people, cause I'm originally from the Orlando area. Um, and I tell people all the time, I say, you know, you don't realize it. Jacksonville is, it's a community. Yeah. It's got its characters, like the way the folio is this month, like all the little characters. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's, it's made up of that. And I think every great community has that, you know, just, it's, it's a big space, but I know you and I know, you know, mm -hmm. you know, Steve Williams and, you know, it's just like these, these characters that really yeah. are scattered through. And, uh, you know, with, you know, the live music scene kind of took a bit of a downturn, uh, you know, during the uh, pandemic, things are starting to open back up and, you know, we're getting, you know, local bands are playing again. Now we're, as you see, we're st finally starting to get like a little bit, some people are announcing some of their tours. Some of the touring is coming back into, exactly. into motion. Some of the festivals are coming back into motion. Are you getting the same kind of feeling down in St. Augustine? Oh yeah. I mean, St. Augustine, I don't, I don't know if we shut down as much as Jacksonville, to no. be honest. I wouldn't say we did. Um, and part of that is St. John's County. I will say this. St. John's County, as far as the vaccinations went and as mm -hmm. far as the implementation, um, they were fast acting. Yeah. They were the fastest. I know the state of Florida was like modeling their vaccination rollout after St. John's County. Oh, yeah. Um, because we had like 68 people done within like four weeks or something. It was something crazy. Yeah. And um, even within, and even like during the pandemic, I think uh, you guys did a much better job of like uh, holding to the mask wearing and maintaining social distancing. Yeah, and the restaurants like the, and the government really worked with the restaurants here to make it feasible for them to do takeouts or for them to do drinks to go. Yeah. And for people to really just be able to participate in the way that they could. And that was it, Yeah, you know, and, and it's and still a small town, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely, I, I'm seeing a lot of stuff coming back. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel fortunate to live in a community where, you know, like sing out loud, which is done by our amphitheater moved yeah. to virtual and immediately mm -hmm. they were on top of it. And it was going to be this virtual show. And, yeah. you know, for a little town, that's, that's pretty sophisticated and cool sometimes. Yeah. And the drinks to go thing, you know, uh, Jacksonville kind of took a cue from you guys uh, with that because it was something we wanted to do anyway. And we kind of followed suit. And now I don't know where it stands legislatively, but I, there's been a push to make the drinks to go concept to make that a permanent thing so it so, passed yesterday is what it I did heard. oh i good. heard it passed yesterday and and i heard they're still like working out the verbiage of the, yeah. what they're going to exactly allow but they voted on it the state and it and the governor oh, signed it or whatever he's he's been signing a lot of stuff this week yeah uh, Quite he's a signing business. away. He's uh he's learned to write his name and now he's now he's going at it. <laughs> he's got a busy pen. <laughs> yes. Now for those who won't be who might not be able to attend the festival uh, on the fifteenth, will there be aspects of it that are virtual? Will any of the uh, stuff be streaming? There there will be a recap video. A recap, um, okay. But but as far as streaming this year, it was it was our first so we were we had this planned mm -hmm. for May of twenty twenty. Right. 
so we had gotten everything. We had procured our headliner, gotten our lineup, gotten our website. I mean, we had done everything. And then two, eight weeks before the event had to cancel it. Yeah. So really with the year, we weren't sure if it was even going to be able to happen this year. Mm -hmm. So, but we were like, you know what, let's do it. You know, so, so in the future, I think there will be more elements like that of the festival because it's yeah. not going to be a one, it's going to be an annual thing. Um, but this year is really about the nostalgia of yeah. a day with your friends in like 90 style. Like I don't even want yeah. people to look at their phone while they're, at, while they're there, honestly. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. A lot of selfies, but you know, I think one you know, kind of a silver lining of sorts to the pandemic thing with the music scene, especially the venues, uh, forcing the streaming and like the way virtual learning was forced on the schools. It wasn't something that they, we wanted necessarily to happen. But now that things are getting back to normal, it's kind of like the drinks to go. It's nice that the artists and the venues have this new technology you know, sure. in their toolkit, like, you know, me as a journalist doing, doing Zoom chats, like, it's a very useful thing, right. and even though I've, you know, I'm still out doing my handshakes and regular interviews, you know, having access to, like, something like this, it really allows me to be extra productive. Oh, absolutely, and, you know, as far as for me making music, like, I've always been an emailer, like, before mm -hmm. people, like, I yeah. feel like emailing didn't really catch on for a while. Like emailing for me is the best thing ever. I can send you a letter from wherever and it goes there. You know, it's awesome. But I think that it really made people have to, like you said, get the tools in their toolbox to like yeah. work a little more efficiently. And, and I think for me, I've seen, I work at a very up-tempo pace and mm -hmm. I get anxious when sometimes being in a smaller town or whatever, you know, I'm like, let's go, let's go. And, and I think for people to have access like that, it has been helpful because I notice a difference in the way that they're communicating. They feel more comfortable yeah. saying, okay, here's this, this, and this, and I trust it's going to get handled. Mm -hmm. Whereas before they would be like, can you meet me for a meeting at two o'clock on Thursday yeah. over here? And it's like, so. yeah. There's a lot more transparency and it's easier to kind of keep track of like the information chain, like who said what and when it was said. Right. And, and you know? I think, I think business owners have really started to tap into that. Like, Oh, I have it in writing now and I can look it back up. Oh, and yeah. then, I, and then I also think the, um, there's that component. And I think the way we've communicated it sort of checks our etiquette a little bit. Hmm. Um, whereas, you know, when you're with somebody there's a nuance and you can kind of yeah. vibe with that. But when you're, when you're communicating in that other realm, you know, you have to really be thorough to say what you mean and mean what you say. And, yeah. you know, you can't rely entirely. You, you can't lean as much on facial expressions and body right. language and which is inflection. a pro and a con. It, yeah. it is a pro and a con, but mm -hmm. I mean, you're more aware of it. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. For, uh, yeah, thank you. you got it all. Do you mind if I put this video up on the YouTube uh, later on? Do your thing. Awesome. I appreciate it. I'll try to get out there to the festival when, um, as soon as I, as soon as I find out when the article is, when is, when the article is going to be published, I'll be sure to let you know. And we will, awesome. you know, of course we'll bang that out on social media. So everybody knows all about it. You're the best. You're the best. I appreciate it, man. I look forward to seeing you soon. I can't wait. It'll happen. All right. Bye. All right. Love you, lady. Love you.